Welcome to another episode of Back on Track Trains. Today we are taking a closer look at a 1952 O-gauge steam engine, the 2025, with its companion 6466W tender. The 2025 was cataloged in 1952 and sold either on its own for $30.50, equivalent to $351.16 in 2023 dollars, or as part of set 1485WS. If you bought it in the set, it came with the 6462 gondola car, the 6465 Sunoco oil car, and the 6257 caboose, along with track, a 1033 transformer, smoke pellets, and other accessories such as a lock-on. If you bought it as a set, it was $9 more for $39.95, or $459.97, in 2023 dollars. So let's take a closer look at this 2025. The 2025 actually has a really complicated history. It was introduced in 1947 as a 262 configuration, meaning it had two front wheels, six drive wheels, and two trailing wheels, uh, which would make it a prairie model. It had Baldwin discs, not the spiked wheels here. It had a silver smokestack um, and a rubber stamp number on the front keystone, which is that right there. Um, some sites list as many as seven variations. So this is the last variation. This is the one made in 1952, so about five years after it was originally introduced. And, and the key difference is really you can tell the, uh, the wheel setup. So this is a 264, so it has four trailing wheels here, which makes it more of an Adriatic style rather than a prairie style. Uh, it has a different keystone, as mentioned, so this has a red keystone, although I'm not sure if this is the original one because the site said that the keystone number should be a 5690 according to what I read. Um, this says 6200, so this boiler front may have come off of a different train. The other thing that's different in 1952, it has a reconfigured pilot with a simulated coupler on the front. Um, and another big difference is the black smokestack versus the silver smokestack. In terms of the motor, the motor has differences as well. Lionel had introduced their magnet traction a couple of pre years previous to this, and what magnet traction did is it made the wheels magnetic so it would stick to the track better. Uh, it reduced the uh, ability of a train to fly off of a train off the track in the corners. It also helped with the pulling power and, and going up hills. But this train was made in 1952 during the Korean War, so magnetic material was at a premium, so these wheels are not magnetic which also changed the frame of the motor a little bit um, from a different material. So very clearly a 1952 version of the 2025. It comes with its matching tender here. So the tender is a whistle tender. It is a 6466W. Uh, I recently rewired this one, so replaced all these wires. So the whistle is loud and sounds great has that nice flare in the back with the simulated coal and the uh, the coupler here. So really nice setup. One of the things that I like about the 2025 is its size. It's sort of an in-between size, but you don't compromise on the detail. So in the front here, I've got a 2055 that I absolutely love. It's got a lot of detail, but it's clearly longer than the 2025. But the 2025 still has the, the great drive rods and, and all of that detail. It still smokes. It um, still has the, the puffer here. So you get a lot of the detail that you have in a larger engine without um, you know compromising on size. So if you have a smaller layout, the 2025 might be better than something like the 2055. At the same time, here's a Scout engine in front of it, and Scout engine's much smaller and doesn't have nearly all the detail on the wheels and, and the drive rods and all that. So the 2025 is just a great option if you have a slightly smaller layout um, and you, you know, want to make those tight 027 curves. Uh, so the 2025 is a great option for that. This example's in pretty good shape. I went through it, I lubricated it, so it's running, it's, it's reversing as it should. Uh, there's a little bit of oxidation on the uh, 
the the rail that that runs alongside of it which would probably be easy to shine up um, again i don't know if that keystone is right this may be a boiler that belongs on a different train but in overall really good shape could probably use a, a little bit more cleaning than even what i did to it um, but really happy with the way that it runs it's really smooth it's actually really quiet I, i've lubricated all the wheels uh, took it apart cleaned the brushes cleaned the commutator and all that so got it running really well the tender also went through that, cleaned it, added new wires for the pickups, resoldered all that in there. So it sounds great. Um, this is really clean. Uh, not a lot of problems at all with this. This is just a, a great looking tender um, and would make a great addition to any layout. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Lionel O-Gage 2025 from 1952. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to this channel. There's a lot more Lionel Train content coming your way.